Hello. Here we have a 3D model of the Brewan zone for a simple cubic lattice. We've opened up the model to show the center, the horizontal uh, square plane, and we can see that this also gives us the labels for the high symmetry points for a two-dimensional square lattice. So we notice at the center of the Brewan zone, in two dimensions, we have gamma. At each of the corners, we have the M points. And at the center of the midpoint of each side, we have points that are labeled X, which is the label that we use for those particular points. To help keep track of which points are which, you'll notice that we've color-coded the particular points. So the gamma, for example, is green, um, X is colored red, and M is colored purple. Here, we've closed the model back up to show the full 3D Brewan zone for the simple uh, cubic lattice, which uh, the Brewan zone for the simple cubic lattice is also a simple cubic lattice. We also see that the center of each face has a symmetry label X. We notice that the corners, the vertices of the cube are labeled with a symmetry label R, and that the midpoints of each of the edges um, are labeled M. To get a better idea of the 3D effect here, we can kind of turn it sideways so we can get a better idea of what this looks like as a three-dimensional object. So by rotating the object, uh, the student get a better feel for how the different symmetry points are arranged in the Brillouin zone. Here we see a three-dimensional model of the first Brillouin zone for a face-centered cubic structure. Interestingly enough, for that particular structure, we, uh, the Brillouin zone itself has a body-centered cubic structure. So we notice some of the high symmetry points on the hexagonal type face, which has C3 symmetry. We notice that the center of the face is labeled L, and each of the vertices of that particular face are labeled W. And if we rotate very slightly, we get a face that has fourfold symmetry. The center of this particular face has a symmetry label X, and each of the corners are labeled W. For this particular model, you can't see it, but the center of the Brillouin zone is also labeled gamma. You can't see it, but that will be the label for the center of the Brillouin zone for this particular structure. Here, we have a three-dimensional model of the first Brillouin zone for the body-centered cubic structure. Interestingly enough, the first Brillouin zone for a body-centered cubic structure has a face-centered cubic structure. And if we make a three-dimensional model, this model has a shape which is called the rhombic dodecahedron. So notice, along the, the center of each face has the symmetry label of N. The vertices along the major axis are labeled H. The vertices along the minor axis, the shorter distance, are labeled P. And the symmetry points at the midpoints of the sides of each parallelogram, each rhombus, are labeled F. Here we have a two-dimensional model for the first Brillouin zone for a two-dimensional hexagonal lattice, and the Brillouin zone also is in the structure of a hexagon. The center of the zone is labeled gamma. Each of the vertices is labeled K, and the center of each face has the symmetry label of M. 
Here is a three-dimensional model for the first Brie Wan zone for the hexagonal structure. And we notice that this Brie Wan zone also has a hexagonal structure. We're going to concentrate on the high symmetry points at the top and bottom because we've already seen uh, the ones in the center when we looked at the two-dimensional case. So we notice that at the center of the face, at the top and bottom, it's labeled with an A. Each of the vertices is labeled with an H. And the center of the midpoint of each uh, edge is labeled L. So by turning the model around, we can actually better appreciate where many of the symmetry points actually are. So we turn around like this, we can see from the side. So here is the K that we had seen before that was at the edge for the two-dimensional. The midpoint of these edges is M, which is here. In fact, we can even turn it around to make it right side up as far as the words. Uh, so we can see the K and the M that we saw before. So this two-dimensional case is exactly what is going along this particular plane of the hexagonal structure as far as the Brewan zone is concerned. You can also see that the symmetry points that we had mentioned, for example, at the vertex at the top, H, is also repeated at the bottom. Along this particular um, plane here, the two-dimensional hexagon that we had seen before, we have a mirror plane. So all the points below the plane are reflected into the points above the plane. This is the first Brewan zone for the tetragonal structure. And we've opened it up to show the mirror plane and the symmetry points that fall along the mirror plane. We can see in the center of the face, the point gamma, which is the zone center. At each of the vertices, we have the symmetry point labeled R. And at the midpoint of each of the edges, we have the symmetry point Z. Then we can close this up, and then we notice the symmetry points at the top and bottom faces. So we see that at the center of the face, we have the symmetry point K. At each of the vertices, we have the symmetry point A. At the midpoint of the long side, we have the symmetry point M. And then the symmetry point at the midpoint of the shorter edge is R. Now this is also, this particular edge here is the edge that forms the square part of the tetragonal face. So if we turn our model on edge, we can actually see it down the square face that makes it tetragonal. This is the fourfold symmetrical face. And we can see that the center of the face is labeled Z. Each of the vertices is labeled A. And then the midpoints of each of the square sides is labeled R. Again, this is one that has a mirror plane built into the model. And this is a mirror plane that bisects the fourfold symmetrical square face. This is a 3D model of the simple orthorhombic structure, and we've opened it along a mirror plane. And we see that the zone center here is gamma. Each of the vertices along this particular plane are labeled T. The midpoints along one side are labeled Y, and along the other side, they're labeled Z. The particular labels in those case tell us that this is the z-axis. So the z-axis goes through the z-points. And the y-axis goes through the y-points. So let's close this up. Look at the top. So here's along another one of the faces on the outside. So we see that the center of this particular face is labeled x because the x-axis goes directly through that. The corners, the vertices, are all labeled R. Along this particular edge, uh, 
the midpoints are labeled S, and along this particular axis, these midpoints are labeled U. And we'll notice that they'll be slightly different if we turn it to the side, because in this case, the vertices are still labeled R, but now since we're going perpendicular to the y-axis, the midpoints in this direction are labeled S, and the midpoints in this direction are labeled T. And in just one last turn, we see that in this particular direction, so now we're going perpendicular to the z-axis because it goes, z goes right through that z-point at the center of the face. Again, we have the vertices are all labeled R, but the midpoints in this direction are labeled U, and the midpoints in this direction are labeled T. So we see that depending which direction you look, the six different faces, you have three different combinations, three different pairs, where the symmetry labels are going to be different. I thank you very much for your attention. Have a good one.